Fifty minutes past eight now while the Associate Transport Minister Julian Genta is calling for a crisis meeting over the road toll. The road toll this year is 329. That's one higher than the total number of deaths for the whole of last year. And the number of deaths on New Zealand roads has been on the rise since 2013. Let's talk now to the Minister who's with me here in the Auckland studio. Good morning to you. Good morning. It is a crisis, isn't it? I think so. It's something that we've been monitoring for a while, even from opposition. We saw that there was this trend of an increasing road toll, and I think there is a lot more government can do. We can put safety at the at the heart of our transport policy and funding, and we can get better outcomes because other countries who've taken a different approach have lower rates of serious injuries and fatalities on their roads. We'll talk about some of the things they do in some of those countries uh, in a second, but I just want to put it in context firstly. 329 people. I mean, it's extraordinary, isn't it? I mean, you know, you, you can go to war for 10 years and not lose that many people. In fact, we did in Afghanistan. I mean, it's phenomenal in terms of the number of deaths. Why do we tolerate it? I think that there has been a kind of invisibility of the road toll to people where it's something like it's reported like the weather, like it's something that we can't control. But, yeah, if you put it in perspective, if that many people were dying in Uh, aviation crashes in a year, there would be a massive outcry and some sort of massive investigation and action on it. But because it's on the roads, we tend not to pay as much attention to it. So this crisis meeting that you're you're calling, who's going to be involved and what are you going to do? Well, even before the road toll got to the point it was, it was one of the first things I asked officials about, what can we do? Obviously, there's a longer-term road safety strategy that is going to take a while to implement, but we, we need to take some urgent action to stop or protect more people from dying on the roads, um, even as the Christmas period comes up. Tomorrow, we're meeting with Ministry of Transport, Road Police and NZTA, and it'll be a longer meeting than what we usually have, and we'll be going through what are all the different actions we can take in the in short term that will make a practical difference. Can you give us any of those? I mean, I know you're not pretending to have all the answers and you, you need to talk to the experts, but I mean... What about things like reducing speed limits or, I mean, are there going to be some definite things you're going to put in place in in the short term? Or I don't think I can commit to any particular policy right now. We need to get to the point where we've got the evidence base and we've got agreement with our government partners to, to take that approach. But there are a huge number of high value, inexpensive changes that can be made to roads that haven't been made because there hasn't been the money. Well, let's talk about those then. And I understand you've said that, that you're not committing to it, so this isn't you committing to it, but give us the generics then on what the sort of measures that you're talking about are. What what sort of things are we talking about? Well, the ministry and NZTA and some of the local authorities um, have already identified areas that are black spots are incredibly high risk. And some of those projects haven't been able to go ahead because the regional council doesn't necessarily have the money or the local council doesn't have the money. And that's, you know, we 100% fund state highways. And we've been spending over a billion years, uh, sorry, a billion dollars a year on just a few very expensive highways that have been upgraded. So they are very safe. But most most trips and vehicles are not on those roads. So if we said, you know, instead of spending $2 billion on the east-west link, uh, we're going to spend a few hundred million to get the same benefits, and then that frees up hundreds of millions of dollars that can be prioritised towards those safety improvements around the country. What about driver behaviour, the culture around driving? Yeah, driver behaviour is certainly a factor. But I would say... For example, we had a road safety expert from Sweden here last week presenting at Auckland Council about the Swedish approach. If New Zealand had the same rate of crashes as Sweden, we would have 200 fewer deaths per year. They've implemented a Vision Zero approach that has been, you know, they started 20 years ago, and it's made a positive difference. And that was basically their their target is for zero deaths, isn't it? It is for zero deaths. I mean, they don't meet that, but that's a target. But it's made a huge difference, and, you know, if we had 200 fewer deaths... For sure. Would you look at something like a zero target? Um, Yeah, I've already already signalled to 
officials, as we did during the campaign, that we want to investigate what would a vision zero approach look like in New Zealand. And I mean, the basic assumption in that approach is people will make mistakes. And it's our responsibility as the people building the infrastructure, designing the roads, designing the transport system to do as much as possible to minimize the harm that happens when people make mistakes. So you are saying that you are investigating a zero road death target. Yeah. uh, Yes. What does a vision zero approach look like in New Zealand? Um, How is it different than the safe systems approach we have? Because in theory, on paper, our road safety strategy looks good. And it was it was adopted in 2010. But it hasn't obviously had the same impact in terms of reducing crashes, particularly in the last four years. Um, So we need better monitoring, we need to understand why it isn't flowing through to our transport funding decisions? Why isn't it flowing through to the design of our roads and our transport system generally? Because one of the reason the re- reasons the road toll has increased is because people are driving more. And the average age of a car in New Zealand is now 14 years. So with older vehicles, they're less safe, more people driving, more likely to be crashes. So we have to do what we can to improve the safety of the roads, and I think there are opportunities to do that if we make it safety the number one priority. And then we also have to look at, well, how do we make it easier for people to get around without using a car? Because that's that's going to reduce the road toll. Yeah. And uh, do you drive? Oh, I, I have a driver's license, and sometimes I have to drive, but I don't but own not a car. not very often. Do, you don't own a car? No, um, I don't own a car, but sometimes I use one. You know, I might have to rent a car to get somewhere or, um, you know, borrow a car from someone if I have to go somewhere. I'm a member of a car share club called City Hop. Okay. So you just you just get a little card and then you book the car when you need to use it. So, and are you going to do anything to encourage, obviously not um, individual companies, but uh, are you going to do more to encourage and, and publicise um, means for people to get out of their cars and not use them as much? This government's already signalled that we want to take a different approach to transport and we're going to have a huge focus on making it safe for kids to walk and cycle to school. We're going to invest in rapid transit in our cities. We're looking at regional passenger rail and we're looking at rail and coastal shipping for freight, which will get some of the big trucks off our roads, which will also help improve safety. Mm. Just a final point, and and as Minister of Women, this might interest you a a little more too. I, I, I didn't have time to fully look at this, but it's my understanding that um, in the vast majority of cases where there are road deaths, that men are behind the wheel. Is there a culture? Is there a cultural attitudinal issue here that is that is a problem with men and driving? <laughs> um, I I haven't looked at that data. Um, I suppose it's not surprising, and and I would say, but you know, as a woman, as a teenager driving in the United States, mm. age 16, 17, 18, um, didn't have my um, you know, brain fully developed, mm. much more likely to take risks mm. and drive too fast. So it's, it's, it's age rather so, than gender. Well, I think there's probably a bit of both, bit and, of both. and probably men are more likely to take risks mm. um, on the roads. And so what we have to do is make sure that we are ensuring the transport system accounts for the fact that people are going to make mistakes and they're going to take risks. And we have to ensure that people are well trained, that they understand the risks. Nobody wants to be getting the phone call mm. telling them their loved one or their friend has been killed or seriously injured in a car crash. Absolutely. Thanks very much for your time this morning and for coming into the studio. I do appreciate